Welcome to the Transtar Industries Podcast. Today, we're talking about CVT transmissions, a very terrifying acronym, but we're going to get to the bottom of it and what you can learn at the shop level to help you more effective at repairing these transmissions. Joining today is Dave Ritzko from Transtar Industries. Tell me what you do at Transtar. I am a technical parts specialist. Uh, I've been in a transmission field since 78, 45 years this year. Uh, I've seen a lot of changes, a lot of things in it. Uh, I'm pretty much the guy that knows the pieces, parts, and how they actually function in a transmission. For shops, how can they identify if a car has a CVT transmission? Is it something that's getting printed in the door jam or on the, the tell by the VIN number? You know, I've never really gone that way to do it. I do it by the seat of the pants. Yep. You get in, and if it don't shift, it's a CVT. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm so used to a step transmission, one that you can feel the shifts. You can actually watch the tack go up and down. When you get in a CVT, they're pretty. It's like a snowmobile. Okay. That I that is one of the things I love to tell people. If you have a snowmobile, would you work on it? And most mechanics will go, yeah, well, yeah. It's a giant snowmobile. That's what it is. For technicians, inside of this transmission, is there anything they're going to recognize that it's also on a conventional automatic transmission? Yes, this, a CVT, will have two clutch packs. The newer ones, actually, they call it the power glide of CVTs, will have a high-low clutch. So one of the setbacks on CVTs for people to buy them is everybody's used to that shift. A new, uh, somebody that's never driven a car wouldn't really notice. But somebody that grew up with a step transmission, you're waiting for that shift. If you don't have it, it's, it's until you get used to it. It's annoying, actually, for me. And so they in the later models, they have a high-low clutch, but it'll have a forward clutch and a reverse clutch. All of them will have that. And it'll have one planetary, because you have to have a planetary to be able to drive forward and backward. So that's that's probably the, and a valve body, some solenoid, so that's common to a stepped or a typical transmission. We're talking about this earlier, transmission fluid and pressure inside of it. What is the amount of pressure that that pump produces on a typical CVT? Is it higher than normal? It's extremely high. Uh, when you go to work on a CVT, no really special tools, but there's going to be a few you need. You're going to need a nice puller. Okay. Uh, TJ1 is a, is a good number they use, and you can grab the pulleys to pull it to be able to get the belt off. The second thing is watch your pressure gauges. You have zero to like 150, and then you have a 300 gauge. If you hook one of them to a CVT, you'll be squirting the inside of the car you need to get at least a thousand pound gauge. The pressures are extremely high in them versus a typical transmission. You get a reverse boost about 300 PSI. This runs six to a thousand under boost. So you could you can get past a thousand PSI in a CVT. That pressure goes into the variators and that has to be that high to do that. What happens when that pump diminishes What to the transmission? Well, you'll, the, one of the first things I believe you'll feel more than anything is you'll start getting a slipping, almost a chatter feel. Uh, and I get a lot of people that say it, it feels like converter chatter. And when you're in lockup, you can get that. But generally, that's the first sign of a belt slipping. If you can catch it fast enough, you save the pulleys, replace the belt. The belt is softer than the pulleys, and it's designed that way so the belt fails first. I always believed it was a good practice to put a new belt anytime you, just like you change the frictions, change that belt. Because that belt, you can look at the teeth, and you'll actually see a smear mark on them. Hmm. When you see that, that belt has been slipping, it has been chattered, it's got to wear, change it. One of the first things people were worried about CVTs when they first come out is accessibility to parts. And as we talked earlier, I 
the first couple I did, I had to get two, three cores to make one good one because wow. the parts weren't there. The dealers weren't selling them. The manufacturers didn't want to sell them. For shops, replacing and service, let's, let's go into the, the service side of it. Are there any repairs as far as sensors, valve body, pump, cooler that you know most shops either miss and they want to replace the whole transmission? Um, what can what what's the opportunities for a CBT transmission? The first thing and and service individual. I know you, everybody says it's lifetime feel lifetime. There's no such thing, not in my world. Now I'm no engineer, but I'm going to tell you fluid breaks down. It just does. They got it lifetime feel because they wanted to make it so long. If they can get out of warranty, they got your business. You should change them. And again, it's all depends on how you drive, extreme. I wouldn't really recommend towing with a CVT, but people do. You know, smaller little trailers. If you do that, high heat, snow, where you're spinning tires, I if, say 50,000 miles would be a really good, really good time. One thing on these, you could change a filter. They, almost every one of them, have a cooler return filter. It's a little teeny cartridge paper filter. Hmm. Change that. That That is more critical than the internal filter. That is where all the debris comes through right into that. You can actually get some that are acting up a little bit. Change that filter and you'll bring new life to that unit. I had a friend, I told him we're doing this podcast on CVT transmissions, and he wanted to know the appearance and color of CVT transmission fluid after 10, 20,000 miles. Is it worse than a normal transmission? No, be the same. Be the same. You, it, you still have the same metal to metal, con little bit more metal to metal here. So when you start seeing fine metal in these, that's... Well, in any transmission, it's bad, yeah. but this is really a kiss of death on this one. If if you wait too long, now you trash the pulleys. That's where the big expense comes in these. If you can get by where you could clean the pulleys up, put a new belt in, uh, valve body wear, is, is, it's a lot of that has been solved. I, I'd like to tell this little story. A few years back, I was in Canada. And when you go up to different places and seminars, you run into interesting people. I happened to run into two engineers that happened to be a CVT manufacturer. And we were talking and I asked them about the low failures. They were f popping out of cars at 50, 60,000 miles. And it's like, that's unheard of. So when the car manufacturer went to the transmission manufacturer, and said, hey, we're having these problems. They started looking at the numbers and they're going, well, that's 60, 70,000 miles. And they said that wasn't developed or, or it wasn't made for that. CVT has been around for a long time, long time. Actually, a little history for history buffs. The first concept drawing of one was Leonardo da Vinci. So what's old is new, what's new is old. And then they had the Subaru Justy, guys that's been in it for a long time remember that nightmare. They had metal in the converter, so when they put electric to it, it would become solidified. Hmm. That's how they got lock up. Run metal through a transmission is just a bad idea. Wow. And, and it, it was real bad, went away. And then here, overseas, most of the stuff that comes to the United States has been overseas for a long time. CVT's been over there in Asia and Europe for a long time. So they come to the States. The difference is in some of them countries, they only drive their cars five years, X amount of miles, 50,000, and then they, they scrap them. There's really hmm. not a repair business. There's warranty business, but not necessarily repair business. So when the manufacturer brought them to the States, same concept, except here in the state, 60,000 miles is brand new. 100,000 just broke in. So one way to tell when you open one of these up, the valve body, if it is shiny aluminum, that is your first design 
that is the one that is going to fail faster. <laughs> when you get a later model, it'll have a dark gunmetal gray to it. It's been anodized or hardened. Them thou bodies last. One little catch in that. A lot of times you could take one of them early units because not everybody puts tons of miles. They'll start acting up. You run to the dealer or your favorite place, Transtar stocks them. You buy a valve body, slap it on, and it fixes it. Now, when you go to work on it, it's got a dark valve body. Is that early or late? That's the little wrinkle in it. Wow. <clears throat> I mean, you, know, you brought up a good point about the longevity and how long these have been around. I'm starting to see, you know, the worst thing I ever, I think I ever heard in my life, the, the, sad, the, the saddest exhaust note I ever heard was a Nissan Ultima heading up a hill with a broken muffler and a CVT transmission. And it was just the most horrible noise I ever heard in my life because there was no shifting. It, it like was screaming at you. Yeah. yeah Help was, me. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, one thing I like to do, so when they first, and again, I've done transmissions a long time and. One of my worst guesses, because a lot of time in transmissions, that's what you kind of do is guess. What's going to fail? How's it going to fail? And anytime you get a vehicle with some miles on it, you can see wear marks. You can see what's going to fail. When CVTs first started coming over, I'm like, don't waste any time. These things are, look at the Justy. And, and I went from past history. Uh, about two years later, I was like playing catch up because I had poo-pooed it, and that was, a re I don't ever underestimate anything anymore because they're here to stay. But one thing I like to do when new units come out, when new stuff comes out, go rent your car. Yep. Go rent your car with that particular one and drive it. The cars are usually new, hopefully somewhat low mileage, and they work. You have a basis to go on. So I went and rented a CVT. I wanted to see what it felt like. And about uh, not even quite a day, I took it back and told him, give me another car mm -hmm. because it was the most annoying thing I've ever driven. Hmm. You have to get used to it if you're a step transmission guy. Yep. It's, it's a different feel. Question from a technician that is talking to. Tracking the position of the two pulleys and then also where it is, pressure-wise, sensors on these transmissions. Can they be an issue? Um, I don't know that you can actually tell okay. where they're at. Okay. Um, but they, they do have the s speed sensors to let them know how to okay. open and close. And again, same thing as somewhat of a step. You have to know what throttle position. You have to know road speed. You have to know all kinds of different things for it to work properly. I, same as, as a step transmission. If you, know, you used to have throttle cables, yeah. used, used to have governors. Now it's all done by electronics. And that computer is looking for all these signals. So any sensor gets a little hiccup. Um, and even beyond the transmission sensors, MAF sensors, ABS sensors, all that... Um, thing I liked, but there was an old game called Operation. The nose. If you touched anything, it lit up. That is a transmission. Okay. That nose is a transmission. So if the ABS sensor goes, it can affect the performance of the transmission. If the MAF sensor goes, and the engine, a lot of people say, oh, the transmission's sluggish. It's the engine a okay. lot of time. MAF sensors are a very neglected thing. People don't even change air filters like that. You know, back in the old days, you spin the wing yeah. nut, put it. Matter of fact, we used to flip them up to get louder noise. <laughs> Today, they're in boxes underneath the battery. They're in places that a, a normal backyarder can't do. So you have to go to a shop. And again, X amount of money. I'm going to save money. I'm going to drive it. And one other killer, and I see them on, and I don't care what transmission, them I don't even want to mention their name, but they're the snorkel filters that you put oil on. Oh, yeah. Okay. So a little oil is good, right? A little bit more ought to be better. Well, not necessarily go because that goes right to your MAF sensor. MAF sensor looks like a big old, uh, well. It's a piece of wire yeah. that's, that's very and hot and you're throwing oil on it. That don't work. 
Yep. And that will start affecting your engine, which will absolutely affect your transmission. I, I know a lot of people have got into the transmission, got it all fixed because it was bad. Because if you keep driving it like that, it's going bad. But they put it in and they still have issues. Now you got to go fix that outside stuff. Um, if, if there's any hint I could give anybody on working, you should always know where the programming level is before you really start diving into it. Because what if you have a little hiccup in something and find out that a programming event will absolutely take care of it? Yeah. And, and again, I do that for a couple reasons. One, I know where I'm at. Two, if a customer comes in with a big fistful of dollar because they know it's going to cost three to five grand, you go in and do a programming, it works. They're leaving with most of that money. You're the most honest shop, the best shop. They'll call you for a flat tire to see because honest people hook up with honest people. So you've made a, they're never going to go anywhere else. Yeah. They got that money and they're going to give it to you at some point. And it's so critical because you see a lot of TSBs listed, um, Mitchell, all data, and it's a lot for reprogramming. Never discount those because typically they'll give a condition like a harsh shift, a code coming on, and you know being able to program will take care of so many problems. Terrible. But look at limp mode when that yeah. first came out. Oh, the transmission. Not the transmission. The transmission is the catch-all. They put it in limp mode, keeps it in one gear. Well, that's a transmission failure. Yeah. And uh, again, most transmission guys got, I got caught on it. I'm going to tell you a couple of times, oh, it ain't shifting. I pulled the transmission out, ain't nothing wrong. Now you got to put it up and you find out it was something else. That's a painful, that's a, education's cost money. Yep. That's an education. It costs you money. And it's also hard for a shop because you're making that second call to a customer. You're like, yeah, we didn't fix it on that first try. Um, CVTs, I, I, guys, for whatever reason, they, they shy away from them real bad. Yeah. You know, I got it because I didn't believe in them at first, but they're out there. They're everywhere. You can stand on the road and watch cars go by. One way I like to really think about stuff, the older I get, the more I think a little bit, just save aggravation. <laughs> when... You go to work on something new. You do your first CVT, first six-speed, eight-speed, ten-speed. You're not going to make any money yeah. because you got to tear it down slow. You're learning as you go. Consider it an education. Educations cost money. Whether you go to college, a trade school, a, a seminar, you're paying money. Yep. But if you take it in my head, I'm not going to make any money. I'm losing money. You've lost. You've lost the game. Anytime you think loss in your head, you've lost the game. So if it's like, okay, I'm going to work on this. I'm not going to make anything, but I'm learning. Yep. You're paying for an education. Your next one comes. It's a little easier. Okay, I know how it comes apart. Your next one comes. Now, I might turn a profit. By your fifth, sixth one, you're, you're, you're turning and burning. Yep. And one good thing about that is the shop next to you still is scared to do them you're now gaining that business. I think it's so critical for shops to understand that the customer is paying you for your knowledge and experience, and that's why you can charge for it. Looking at it as a per hour job transaction, it, it doesn't work that way because you know it's just it's not one CVT transmission, it's the productivity of the entire shop that you may have an engine out in the next bay, a brake job in the other, but to keep the stuff moving, I mean, Productivity is so key. Absolutely. Uh, another thing, if, if you take one down, I call it the squeal factor. You take one down and it's annihilated. Hmm. You go buy a unit and you put it in. And now you move along. And if you can salvage some of it, if you don't have to return the core, you start your little core pile. Yeah. If it looks pretty clean, get into it. Learn it. They're, they're out there. They're not going away. They're, they are as as much as I didn't want them to come, they're here. They're here to stay, and I'm really comfortable with them now. Um, they're, they're any unit, any unit, six speed, eight speed, ten speed. You put them in, and they fail in a short time. You're going to have that with this, except there's not as much into this to learn as some of them 
I mean, you take this apart, you could put this whole transmission here. Yeah. You take a 10-speed, you're going to need this whole bench. <laughs> so it's less stuff. Um, I, I was at a shop, and the guy is a Honda expert. Loves Hondas. Hondas was my worst nightmare. There's guys that love them, and uh, uh, God bless you for them. And he wouldn't do a CVT. And mm. I took a couple cores up. We put them back and forth together. He's now busting out CVTs. He didn't like them at first, hmm. but he liked money. Yeah. And they're there. And they're <laughs> they're going to be there for us. Well, I'd like to say thank you to Dave and also Transstar Industries for uh, sponsoring this podcast. Uh, look for future podcasts in regards to other transmission topics, AC, chassis, and other components in the Transstar portfolio.